Welcome to the second video in the series, The 30 Rules of Lighting, a webinar that was guest hosted by Ray Maloney, world-renowned lighting journalist. In this video, Ray's gonna take us through rule six to 14. In the previous video, we'd been told to lose the downlights and to lose the pendants as a main light source. We were given a couple of things that it's recommended that we do use, and Ray, what would you say is the next type of lighting source that would be excellent for our electrical contractors to think about installing? More lights, you know? Um, maybe there's a reason. Maybe any any of the electricians on tonight can tell me why why we why we see so few luminaires on walls. Is it because nobody likes chasing in a wall? Is it because it's you know? But I think uh, you know wall lighting is is good lighting basically. Wall lights are great. I mean they you know they they put light in that visual field as I was talking. It's a great way to light a wall. Put a wall light on it. Obviously, we've got to watch for glare, but these type of designs that have up and down um, look great. You know, uh, these geometric patterns, and then you can get three or five or whatever in a row. Again, these little marker lights recessed in the wall. You know, you look at this corridor here, you think, first thing you would do is, oh, I'll put in a row of down lights. But this is so much more elegant and simple and, you know, Again, you probably got the same amount of luminaires there than had you if you were putting in downlights. But it's just it's just a, just a more creative solution. So next time you see a corridor and you're going to put downlights in, say, is there a way we could just light this differently? Because you know you could put, you could have put wall lights higher up there. You could have done anything in here. You could have been quite creative. And again, I you know in my home I've got three three battens along a wall and they look great. You know, simple. As long as you can use fittings that are quite utilitarian, and um, and sometimes they look better re repeated. So instead of just one, you know, sometimes they look better when you've got a lot of them. Like this, this looks fantastic. And these are basic battens. Look, look to me like just basic battens. And there you go again. The temptation would have been to put down lights in there, and those wall lights. They're just different. You know the pick up some light on that on that ceiling and again you can get them these quite dramatic shapes and again I've got a rule coming up that says uh, lights should be in groups of three or five or seven so this is in two so this totally undermines what we're going to say later but anyway when look at that when you get the lighting effects overlapping that looks very dramatic very simple four wall lights but look how fantastic they you they look don't you know they haven't the temptation would have also been to spread them out along this space here but by joining them together look how great that looks and again this is just shows you how you can really wow a space there is a uh, ceiling lighting here but look how well though those mirrors look they uh, look absolutely got the wow factor and i love these here's a simple thing these, these cough tree these sort of bulkheads die cast bulkheads these are fantastic they, they have a wonderful glow of light they're cheap as chips and they're great on walls they they look brilliant so i yeah i recommend seeking these out um so for uh, obviously they don't suit everywhere but they look great in bathrooms look great in cafes um exterior interior whatever so what I'm, I'm trying to get you to think about is, you know, we're always talking about products and luminaires and different types of luminaires, but think about what the professionals do that the rest of us don't is that they think about what effect am I trying to achieve? So here, they've, you know, you have this effect of light and dark. In, so it's about the effect. So the, the, how you achieve this, uh, you find the right, the fittings and the luminaires and the locations afterwards. But a professional will look at this and say, how do we retain the moodiness, the atmosphere of this old church? This is St. Bart's in um, Smithfield. You know, and look at how beautiful that is. You, that's a place you just want to be in and it's kind of got this magic quality. And it, it's so easy to sort of, blast that with light and take away that magic and they've gone for you know this this these elements of light and dark fantastic so here's another thing think about the people and the tasks they're going to do in that space i mean this is a classic example classic example 
you know, you have somebody here, you have a kitchen, yes, and you want a kitchen to be pleasant, but you also do tasks in, in the kitchen the, and the task like using sharp knives to cut onions, you know, and here the under, under cabinet is a perfect location to put decent lighting so people can see what they're doing, using it, doing it. So they're not working in their own shadow and you're putting light where it's needed. I mean, hairdressing, and I suppose everybody's getting used to doing home hairdressing. I don't know about you, Joe, but uh, I got the wife cut my hair, and uh, it's important to get the lighting right. Uh, actually, I'm, I'm desperate to cut my hair, and I won't let her. So yeah, we're, we're going to the at the moment. <laughs> Sorry. My wife did a great job after watching a YouTube video. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it's a. You think about this task. You know, the customer's got to look great. They've got to look really flattering when they see themselves in the mirror. But then you've got somebody walking around with sharp scissors near ears, and they need to have really good task time so they can see exactly what they're doing. They need to see the hair color. They need to see where they're cutting. So that's the you need to think, think task first and what's going to happen in that space rather than let's just light this empty room. So a basic, basic bonus rule there, never force anyone to work in their own shadow. Uh, here's another thing, and um, good lighting designers are not afraid of the dark. And by dark, I mean, next slide. Look at this space here. Is that bad lighting or is that good lighting? I think that's great lighting because the temptation, again, is to put light everywhere. But do you, do you really need light, light everywhere? You, you know, you've got a couple of pictures there lit up. You've got the top of the basins lit, the toilet is lit. That's all you need. It looks great, it looks fantastic. You could have ruined that by putting in more lighting. It's a dark space, let it be a bit dark, dark and moody. It's fantastic. And again, you'll sometimes see this in commercial environments, like at a restaurant. They're not afraid of a bit of dark. You know, look at that, look where people are supposed to walk to their table. You can't really see where you're walking. I don't know what, I don't know what the light level is there, maybe one lux half a lux does it matter no i don't think so is it a health and safety issue i don't think so but so so don't be afraid you, it, lighting doesn't have to be everywhere it doesn't have to be uniform and don't believe anybody who says it has to be uh this is uh, a bugbear of mine flood lighting of buildings yeah i mean you see this a lot in churches you know these you mount these uh thorn packs you know eight meters away from the building and just blast it up and um, it makes for terrible lighting sad to say you're better off just to pick out a window or something pick out features this leads on to rule 11 so uh see here this building is interesting architecture you'd probably walk past it during the day and wouldn't notice it but at night time lighting can pick out the interesting elements of the classical architecture and uh that is that is a classic design, a great lighting because you see the building, you don't see the lights, and you appreciate elements of it that you probably don't see during the day. That's very successful lighting. Uh, don't be afraid of color. There's lots of color has come out with LEDs over the last twenty years, and people went a bit mad with it, as we always do with a new technology. But um, I would say. You know, use color, but use it as a small element. It works really well as a small element in the scheme, but not a dominant element. So here you see a little bit of blue on the stairwells, and that looks fantastic. So don't my my point is don't be afraid to use a little bit of color, but don't use it too much. Maybe 10, 15 percent of a of a project. Uh, uniformity. Uniformity is a big deal in lighting because people there's all these rules and. Uh, 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 about uh, uniformity and you know what uh, it's completely overrated here is a very very non-uniform um pavement in holland and that isn't that a lovely place to walk down it's not uniform but it's not dangerous either i mean that's just a really pleasant uh, place to be and again in this car park the lighting isn't uniform, but would that mean you're going to struggle to find your car? No. Does that make it a, an unpleasant place to drive through? No, not really. 
Um, so uniformity, overrated, don't worry about it. Uh, a lot of rules and lighting, unlike anything, you know, rules are there, don't, don't worry. Too. I mean, sometimes there are, you know, supermarkets or other organizations who demand, you know, a minimum level of illumination on, on the merchandise. And in that case, yes, deliver it. But, you know, don't obsess about these things. Lighting is, light is light. It's, it's, it's there to be used and enjoyed and to be creative with. Thanks very much for covering those points for us, Ray. They were really helpful and we're looking forward with bated breath to the next instalment in this excellent series. Thank you very much for watching.